Baron shows up. You know. <laughs> yeah. It's Bets hard to off. get Baron to listen unless he absolutely wants to. Yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. Baron's often on transit. Oh, I see we get a strip show too. Whoa! Oh, Fantastic. You know, that shirt goes really well with those pants. So much beach. texture. I mean, the colors are plain, but the texture is fabulous. Thank you. Well done. Yeah, local talent. Local <laughs> yeah, it's great. Local we got so talent. Much, we got so much local talent. Yeah, we do. Okay. We are ready. Well, what a great place to be. Really? Where am I going? I'm on the beach house. On the coast of California, Monterey Bay, uh, in the middle of summer. What a place to be. It is. 2019. Under, under flapping American flags. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. so what I might choose to call the greatest dark age. The greatest dark age. Huh. No, we're so hypnotized by, by materialism and technology. Oh, I, I can really agree on many levels. That, that, Truly. That it's so hard to become spiritual. It's hard to be simple. As, as, it's, as, you can't be simple anymore. By the way, anymore. those are the same thing. Simple and spiritual are, are, are quite similar. You can be simple, but look at Gandhi. I mean, uh, not the, the Dalai Lama. Look at the Dalai Lama. He lives simply, but he's got everything. If he wants to go somewhere, he, some people will take him there. If he needs food, it, people it, feed him. It, in a Rolls Royce. Well, well, exactly. I, mean, I know, but pragmatically, don't you think you can find God on the beach? Don't you think you can find God right yeah. here? Yeah, no, exactly. not right here. Yeah. Right here. Don't you think you can find God I just here? Really this, this is God. We need more than this? Yeah, no, we don't, but we like to look for it. Yeah, we enjoy that song, searching. That song, Suppose God Were One of Us. Oh, really hilarious. What if God were one of us? How about the old classic? Uh, well, that's a great Jesus song. Jesus been named Bud. When I first heard that song, I couldn't believe it. I said, this is, this is, it was at the gym. Was what if God was one of us? Yeah, what if God was one of us? Just a slob like one of us. I love it. So I would want to just yes. like talk to you guys, just uh, do a little bit of a download on yeah. kind of current activity and some things I wanted to kind of announce and this and that. Great. And then, and so let me just riff and go for it. You can interrupt me a little bit, but then we can talk after that yeah, okay. discussion. Uh, and so there's a bunch of different threads and I don't have it organized in my head, so I'm going to just get a little bit loose. But what I'm uh, pretty active on lately, I find myself more involved in media projects. That's one thing I just want everybody to know. And that means film uh, and books. And uh, I do work with Synergetic Press. And I'm going to drop a bunch of URLs while I'm talking. Right? So synergeticpress.com is a publishing house that grew out of the Biosphere 2 project in Arizona. John Allen and Deborah Perry Snyder, who live out at Synergia Ranch in Santa Fe, which anyone who's going out to Santa Fe is a great thing to visit because it's really a cool little intentional community they have going. And behind Synergetic Press is also their Institute of Ecotechnics, uh, which was the uh, entity that designed and put together the partnerships to build Biosphere 2 in the 80s. And they've done many other projects. They have the Heraclitus research vessel and a bunch of different things going on. Are the they Bash are, Brothers involved with that? The Bash Brothers were involved in the original Biosphere 2 project. And there's a film and there's books and there's other new things coming out about Biosphere 2. So it's going to be a little bit back more in the popular well, culture when did that end? over the next uh, couple of years. When did it end? Yeah. Uh, well, in the 80s, it kind of you know had a short lifespan for its original mission to simulate the Earth environment with uh -huh. Biospherians going in two years and they didn't make the two years uh -huh. but it's still up and running as a research center that's uh -huh. operated by the University of but Tucson. No people already. What kind of research is being done there? Uh, just different they, they use this, the, the different environments there to do soil research and, and things. It's an all biospheric interview. science kind of stuff but it's yeah. not what it originally was designed for. I remember for. hearing an interview with one of the women who was originally there and she talked about how difficult Yeah okay it was. I'm going to keep talking. Yeah. Go okay. ahead. And so uh, Biosphere 2 uh, films coming out just something to be aware of but then uh, we have we only publish a few books a year, and our new book is The Secret Drugs of Buddhism, and we're doing a, a launch party in San Francisco on the 17th. Uh, that'll be very cool. Eric Davis will be involved there with the San Francisco uh, chapter of the Psychedelic October. Sangha that started in New York oh, City. Oh, no kidding. And, October? Uh, October. Somewhere, yeah, it's October 17th. Ah. And uh, we don't have the venue yet, but it'll be anyway very cool. Uh, in San Francisco. There's some Buddhist ritual and different things going on there. Yeah. 
And um, so, uh, again, just my personal update is that in addition to working as associate publisher of Synergetic Press and contributing to the publishing uh, program there, which is pretty minimal in that we just do one or two titles a year, uh, but we also do events and other things, and so it's a wonderful association. But I also am working more formally now with Waterside Productions' Bill Gladstone, who's down in San Diego, and, uh, and bringing a number of book and film projects through that literary agency and publisher. He was mostly and a tech publisher. Has he expanded his uh, range? He started uh, Waterside many years ago. In fact, I had Avant Books, my small press back then, yeah. when I published Deep Ecology and Buddha by Nikos Kantzakis and some other amazing small press titles in the 80s. Uh, Bill likewise started Waterside at that time and grew it over a period of a few years into the largest uh, computer and technical book agency in the world. Mm -hmm. And today it remains one of the largest literary agencies in the world. Mm -hmm. And he has represented all kinds of authors way beyond the tech space. Uh, he was uh, Deepak Chopra's the, A New Earth was his. Uh, he agented mm -hmm. that and uh, all kinds of stuff. And so Waterside has both the agency side <laughs> with some activity uh, with books and film. You know, film projects come uh, along with books, but it's mainly books. But there's also a publishing operation that Bill uh, has put together that allows for uh, authors who, many of them, have already been published by major houses and have quite a following, and so they don't really need the publishing house to sell books, and so this has been optimized as a subsidized publishing program. Mm. And so, uh, and it's got, I would cite, you know, Urban Laszlo has some books out through Waterside Press, and, and um, but Mark Gober's new book called An End to Upside Down Thinking, <laughs> is uh, something that everyone should take a look at. Mark Gober is a brilliant young guy, like 32 years old, who made uh, a lot of money in the financial world, super smart guy, and had kind of a wake up at 31, like, what am I doing exactly here? Great. What's going on? And he, so he started, speaking of ions, right, he, he started going through all that literature and consciousness mm -hmm. and psychic, and, and so it basically regurgitated all that in the form of this new book which is fantastic, and he used a lot of his own money to do a proper promotion for this. He's made it a bestseller, and so he's a young millennial, millennial transmitting all of this, you know, what, what Bruce is going to talk about next week, you know, yeah. to the younger, younger uh, crowd. Is he like Nassim Harriman or something? He's something? not himself. He's more of a reporter. He's kind of like a Comrades young Daniel Pinchbeck kind of. And that he's synthesizing and recording. Storytelling? Yeah. What's That's a very on. important place to it be. It is. Yeah. yeah, so I'm saying he's an important young voice in that regard. So anyway, bottom line is I'm excited about getting more. And by the way, this has been a constant throughout my life since I was in my 20s. Is getting, I, I realized early on, getting transformational information out in the world is extremely important. And that's what led to my early small press work. A lot work. of us feel that way. And then realizing that the publishing industry was kind of broken, and that's why I went all in with desktop publishing. Uh -huh. that You've happened. invested yourself beautifully. So I am. So anyway, um, uh, I welcome uh, any from our circle and your guys' circle down here. I mean, in the room last night, probably 15 people that if they don't have a book out, they should, or whatever. Uh -huh. you know, there's least. a lot of people that want to do it. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I would love to help you know, facilitate things. That's a wonderful that thing to offer. In space, so, yeah. But How about other v VR titles and stuff like that. Let's say again. V titles for VR AR is that uh, sort of start, good starting start? Good question. Uh, but so far not. Uh, yeah. But that would be a likely area to expand Waterside into that space, and it makes me think of. Um, you know, New Path VR, our friends Fred Davis. Sure, Lisa, uh, Lisa yeah. Lisa Harris. Considering how much you're aware might come to you, you're, you're really making an excellent and, and, and a, uh, a really appreciable uh, availability of yourself. Sometimes. Well, I, I mean, I appreciate <laughs> you're saying. I mean, sure, yeah. You're saying, Does anybody who's interested in a book, you can talk with me. That's that's an invitation a lot of people only wish they could get. Right. Yeah, yeah that's true. true. Yeah, it is. It remains a mystery. But, well, I mean, the, the wonderful thing today is anyone can publish. Well, most you guys know run. Murr. A lot of people doing Amazon. Murr, who had his sure. books for years, a yeah. Goa guy. And he, he, he gets checks every Nick's month from Amazon published. now because he put his books all online huh? instead of carrying around his, you know, like little Xerox books. He's nice. now a published Nick's author. Nick's been self-publishing his poetry. Do you have, did right. you have a copy of Harlot Nature? Yes, I do. I keep going. I'd like to get it. But yeah, so yeah. anyway, so that's all wonderful, right? Anybody can yeah. be a writer. But yeah. still, and in this world of all the wacky fake news and shit on the web, exactly. books have a new value for a trusted source of That's knowledge. Nice to hear. And so it is good 
to work with publishers when one can yeah. have your book in a, in a more authoritative, credible right. context uh, right. particularly if you're a scientist. Right, instead of just being self-published. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, so, all right, so, but what's going on, been going on for me the last couple of years is a lot of ramping up and a lot of activity and also a lot of bringing back things from the past, kind of cycling back around, you know, and um, so let me try to maybe be organized here. I wanted to talk about some events, and <clears throat> I will mention that <clears throat> I have worked a lot in the cannabis space over the years, so maybe just to treat cannabis right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, what's your trajectory through the cannabis world? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I got involved in cannabis activism back with the Digital Bee in the 90s, which was just one of the themes, you know. And we had Chris Conrad and Mickey Norris on stage back in 98 or whatever. And in fact, one of the, I think that year was the Drug Peace Campaign we launched at the Digital <laughs> BN, and we were, you know, we were acknowledging the whole connection as the BN did yeah, with the psychedelic like consciousness uh, dimension, okay. and, and the digital revolution is very related, yeah. right? And, yeah. and uh, so, but um, I got more actively involved just through my friends, being friends with Nikki and Swami, who've become very famous in the in the space. Now. Organic. Uh, Organic growers and, and with the, the spiritual dimension of cannabis as well as the political, and they're they're amazing. And Tim Blake, who runs the Emerald Cup, um, but what really got me very deep in the field was in 2010. I was hanging out with Steve D'Angelo up at Turtle Creek Ranch, and, and I was bemoaning the hemp con events no, and where, these where, like where that? stoner yeah. events. Uh, Nikki and Swami's place up in Mendocino. What were you bemoaning uh -huh. about? Them? The stoner events called HempCon and the different uh, cannabis events that existed at that time, which really promoted the like the, the, the outlaw culture and the stoner culture, which is okay, but that's not what it was all about, right? We were, and Steve D'Angelo was saying, absolutely, we need to do it. So why don't you guys, speaking to me as one of the Earth Dance people, and for those who don't know, earthdance.org is the International Dance Party for Peace that's been going on for many years. Uh, that I and a few others uh, manage the nonprofit that coordinates it, and uh, so he was like, "You and bed producers should do." And I said, "Absolutely, let's do something." So I came back with a proposal for Deep Green, and Steve, uh, you know, introduced me to David Bronner, who I, I hadn't known before, but we got David on the phone, and David wrote us a check as an initial sponsor, and we launched a wonderful festival that we held two years in 2011 and 2012 at Craneway Pavilion. DeepGreenFest.org. No, DeepGreenFest.com is a website that's still up there, and it's very instructive to look at it now. And we we held those events on Earth Day, and they were celebrating hemp as much as medical cannabis. Yeah, beautiful and, location. Uh, they had uh, a well-rounded uh, experience with music. You were really village. preceding a lot of what has occurred since. You really boosted it. It, 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 that event did tweak the industry, yeah. and it also inspired and helped Tim, who I, I also helped him bring the Emerald Cup down oh, yeah. from Mendocino to well, Sonoma you. County down Fairgrounds from Swami's living room. in 2013. <laughs> well, you. it was originally at Area, One, yeah. Area 101, and so, and so Deep Green helped inspire the Emerald Cup as it evolved as well, and, oh. and which I participated in all these years. Well, there's a lot of people who will never know that, so appreciate our thanks. We really appreciate for all the people who will never know all the goodness you've done for them. No, there's yeah, so no, many no, people no, you've done no. good for. So the EmeraldCup.com, that's, that's uh, Tim Blake's event and, and his daughter and an amazing culture. And one of the reasons it's become the most uh, really um, favorite cannabis event in the world, perhaps, it's because it grew out of the authentic grower culture of California. Right. Yeah. The Graphics. family growers. Tim ah. is a family grower. Yeah. Him and his daughter run it. And you know what I, I mean? Love that, that about yeah, and, and, but at the same time, it's now become, and they have partnered with uh, Red Light Management, it's who do Bonnaroo, world. and yeah. they, oh. they represent Dave Matthews Band and all this. Oh. They came in and up, upgraded the production values of the entire event. So, so now you go there and you see all these brands, and it's everybody from all over the world. And just, it's fantastic. You know, it's amazing. Every, I mean, just in the it's all still uh, sun grown. Willie no. Nelson there last year. Well, yeah, that's one of the that's examples. The deal. It's that's the got That's great. That's one of the that's examples great. of the that's power great. of just saying, we're going to have a competition for California growers, but we only accept sun grown <laughs> outdoor. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, so that tweaked huh. the industry. Huh. Huh. Nice. You know, Flo Kana was early on. Friends, they've just got a $135 million investment. They have four, 200 farms that they do centralized processing for. They're all organic farms. Everything that's you have to.
Pure Organic, if you're with Flow Con. That is so splendid you so, know all of this. So our, our industry, cannabis industry, is driving the sustainable agriculture uh-huh. movement at large and other uh, innovations going on. It's pretty exciting. Have you ever been interviewed for like the radio? Because you could, you could share what you'd like to I've done to. some interviews, and I had a podcast for a couple of years, yeah. and actually well, I stopped Dr. doing Future, it right before Dr. the podcast Future took off. Dr. Future can have you as a guest. Uh, we, we have this is really a little interview right sure. now. Good. Yeah. Let's yeah. Just, uh, I know, but I, so know, the, I guess we're being recorded. Is the cannabis yeah. industry uh, on the verge of another uh, growth spurt or change? Or, or I think is it must it, be. Uh, the corporate well, what's over? happening is um, the small grower community that I was just talking about, you know, yeah. Up and so forth, they've all been decimated by legalization yes. because they cannot handle all the all the taxes. requirements, the taxes and the regulations. Oh, paperwork. Right. It's, it's, it's paperwork you know, is in So it's a big. It's almost worse than criminalization. It's a big com- Yeah, it is. And, you know, and the whole the Jack Herrera guys who've been kind of on the fringe still all these years, but you know, it's basically true and it's right that it's all bullshit. I mean, it, it should be. It's an herb. Should be able to do what we want with it. Yes. And huh. If we're talking about, our, you know, our cognitive freedom, that's what it's about. We yes. Do what we fucking want with any and herb humans, you want to put in our body. And humans and marijuana have grown together. Hemp and humans became yes. what they are in the Middle East when it was growing. We grew of course, up with yeah, the whole history. Well, so okay, so we keep going here. So I've ended up working on a new project with Mark Kitchell, who is the, um, the director that did the original Berkeley in the 60s film, which is pretty famous. Yes, yes. I remember and then, the then he I more recently too. did uh, Fierce Green Fire with uh, Robert Redford and, yes. and uh, a number of other uh, Ashley, anyway, uh, celebrity uh, narrators. Like Eco Green Fire. Eco Green. Yeah. Yeah, environmental film. And then most recently, and you guys would love this if you haven't seen it, is Evolution of Organic, which is the whole history of the organic food movement. Nice. Which indeed began on hippie communes in California. I love it. Okay. And not just the idea, but the technology but I, was, I was developed. When I was in my hippie days, when I was in my early 20s, I was totally into Rodale and I started doing organic gardening wherever I could. Right now, my, my garden in Capitola is over 50 years old. Yeah, Rodale Press. And, you know, uh, Rodale is amazing. Rodale was amazing. Yeah. And prevention. Rodale and prevention. He did amazing stuff and he really established ways which we could use, but mostly for the East. He started. Treating the, the West Coast later. Right. So, uh, Can- Cannabis Chronicles is the new project, and it's going to be um, a series uh, on one of the streaming channels. And uh, at the moment, it's a five part series. It might change, but it's a comprehensive look at the whole cannabis thing from way back in China and all that, and but as it's evolved through this country. And, That's and there'll be a really, really good overarching project. A lot of stuff going on in that space right now. Uh, Is National Geographic interested in all of this? So, we, so anyway, we also do um, uh, Howard Street Fair, which I've been involved in for years too. Is the San Francisco um, dance party in the financial district uh, that goes for eight hours on a Sunday every year, and uh, you know this will be the 20, 20 first year next year. We just oh, did nice. the twentieth year. And, um, you know, it's like 10, 10 stages and 25,000 people, I and, miss and that. each stage yeah. is managed by a, it's kind of Burning Man style, like it's a theme fun, camp. Each fun, stage yeah. is managed by a different down, posse. Down, down That's some great, great yeah. footage from it's, that. It's a great time. And that it's it, terrific. And so um, the Green Alley, which we started two years ago, which I've produced there, is like a, 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 an event within the event where we have speakers and uh, music and, and booths selling. Uh, uh, not not selling cannabis yet. This year we almost had sales. We were almost the first event in San Francisco to have cannabis sales under the new regulations. Partnered with the Emerald Cup actually to do that because it's very strict how you do it. I mean, just briefly, you have to have a distributor on site that distributes the product to the booths that are selling the pot. Huh. And so it simulates the, distributor. It simulates how it's done in, in, with dispensaries huh. at an event. So we were going to be one of the first, but we'll have that next year, next May. Uh, Howard will, Green Alley will have sales, so that'll be quite a quite a thing. But we've had a big educational approach this year, and one thing is uh, filling in the new adult use uh, marketplace uh, on the history. And one of the telling questions when you're in a crowd of pot appreciators, appreciators, does anybody know who Dennis Perone was? You know, <laughs> and it's. Well, surprising how few people know. You know, the, the, the missing ingredient from what I can see is 
and what they have in the alcohol world, which is where you have a social environment where you can smoke yeah. beer and hang out right. and meet each other. Yeah. Like I, the, the, the Middle Eastern world, they have the hookah. You sit around the table. Oh, the, go to the coffee shop. Yeah, 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 in yeah. Amsterdam. I mean, what do we have going on here Not in the social yet. media, in the social space department? Right. Uh, is there any, or is that highly regulated? Car, car really old yeah. coffee houses, if we can only smoke hash. Well, North Hollywood just passed only very, smoke hash. the very first <laughs> restaurant in, um, uh, in California that will have a, oh. a smoking license that you can ingest oh, and, nice. and smoke oh, in the restaurant and so you can serve cannabis cuisine and things like that. So that is starting great. to happen. Yeah. Go ahead yeah. and, and, and detail Dennis Perron. Yeah. The original. Dennis Perron was the gay man uh, who started the first dispensary in San Francisco uh, and it was at the height of the AIDS epidemic and people were dying and suffering and cannabis was the only yeah. thing that relieved their suffering. And made them eat. And, got, and kept them alive because it stimulated their appetite so they would eat. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So it was a, a, a huge, you know, uh, uh, factor in the culture here, and so. But Dennis went on to write uh, 215 and put the campaign uh, forward to uh, start the medical marijuana. So this, it all started in San Francisco, yeah. and compassionate use was the, the, the beginning, and uh, it's driven the whole revolution since. Yeah. As slow as it's been, at least it has the, the, the happened. The opponents of medical marijuana argued... Well, was in 94, 95. The opponents of medical marijuana argued that this would lead to general usage. And they, of course, were right. Well, of course, they were right. So what? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's the problem. So anyway, to move on. Um, uh, yeah, Emerald Cup coming up in December of this year. For those who are interested, check it out. Is there is there a more entrepreneurial activity, or is it too regulated now? I mean, what about edibles? I mean, is that is that as regulated and restricted? No, very regulated. Everything. Yeah, everything. Super. So you, you know, it differs in the different yeah. states. Well, here in California. I mean, <coughs> you guys have been into the chocolates. You and Nick have both been. Yeah, the edibles. I mean, I prefer the edibles in many respects. Yeah. One thing for everybody to remember is to ditch the term recreational yeah. use right. and okay. use the term adult use. So that's what that's, that's very important. Sense. Yeah, because we don't want people to get upset because kids are using it. Well, kids yeah, have always been using it. It's stupid to call it recreation. recreation. I mean, that, yeah. that is one yeah. thing about it, but it's so much more in yeah. adult use. Scientific. So, uh, yeah. right. one last thing on the Howard Street Fair, howweird.org. Yes. Uh, greenalley.net is a dedicated site for the Green Alley component. Uh, <coughs> there will soon probably be a website that says, How Weird Santa Cruz. Because we are going to do one in oh. September down here in collaboration with the community here. No, I'm going to be able to enjoy that. That's going to be great. Yeah. Gonna September a, 2020? Very likely, yeah. Uh, and which is a super powerful, as we learned last night, the alignment next year of the planets and stuff in September and in November in particular. And this is the one you want to use San Lorenzo Park for? The what? You want to use San Lorenzo Park for this? That we're talking about doing it at San Lorenzo Park. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a we good We are going to do it there. Yeah, that's, confirmed a, that's, that's probably yesterday. the best place because everybody can get there. That's yeah. also a traditionally cool place to have events. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah and lots of space. Yeah. So, okay, so um, I've done a few uh, events lately and videos of them. And one series that uh, I've done with my colleague, Jamin Shively, who organizes the Sierra Club dinners. They're held at the Berkeley Yacht Club, uh, where we've had a series of different speakers. And um, one of those, Jamin invited me to do uh, a presentation about Calafia, the Northern California model arcology huh. that we had proposed uh, earlier in the aughts, back in 2005, six, seven. We had a whole group around the Green Century Institute that Mark Caskey, former director of Fort Mason Center, a good friend of mine, and Henry Dakin and I formed Green Century Institute, which for about five years was a clearinghouse on sustainable communities. And one of our projects was we wanted to do two things. We wanted to create a web-based platform to share best practices and connect sustainable communities. And we wanted to create, after having had the experience that I did for many years, being on the board of Arcosani and being at Arcosani, which I'll mention a little bit more about, um, I realized that one of the reasons Arcosani hadn't made it as a fully developed model arcology for 5,000 people was that it was out in the middle of nowhere and its closest cultural business you know, center was Phoenix. And the idea that 
this something like this, a visionary project like this, needs to have a more supportive cultural environment, and Northern California would be the place to do such a thing. And so we, for a couple years, and some great people involved, you know, really we were researching this, we were actually looking at sites and things, and, and a little naive, but, uh, but Davis, California, out there, near Davis, near the university, and that was kind of the top choice. But anyway, so I did a video that's online now. It's called Califia Designing the Northern California Arcology. It's on YouTube. Um, it's a little over an hour. But I go through the whole kind of story of what's going on with Eco Cities, with the original arcology, Arcosani, and Eco Cities, and, and then Eco Villages, that movement. And, <clears throat> and uh, it's a pretty good video. It's, it's, and it's kind of like this. I'm talking rather casually, but it's a lot of material. I have slides. And, uh, and, it, and the name of the video on YouTube would be Califia. C A L. Gosney Califia. Yeah, C A L I F I A. Got it. It's also it's on the Arcosani website too. Okay. Arcosanti.org. So. It is a private network for the regenerative culture movement, with the engagement of many. It's a community of communities as well as individuals, but a lot of communities will be represented on it, and not just the physical communities such as those I mentioned. But also communities of practice, all of these communities of practice and interests that populate the festival and potential community worlds. Uh, and so bringing a focused uh, network together, initially a few hundred people, then only a few thousand people, it's not that huge of a project. But uh, we're, we're very excited, and, and I, at this point, I'm quite confident of a success because of the two things we have. We have a wonderful technology partner and it's the perfect platform for this. And we also have a wonderful team that's already kind of got this going, you know, uh -huh. in the different areas. You know, Global Eco Village Network people and, and, and so well, communitas.zone is the information the website zone. about it. And now there's been the, uh, like the Burning Man idea where you build a civilization and it goes away. And then there's also the, I guess the community is more where it has more sustainability and it continues to exist and maybe host a big party for the rest of the communities every so often as part of, its, yeah. uh, you know, part of what it does. I think there needs to be, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's part of what my talk was about. Well, how yeah. do we, you know, cross-pollinate and you know, what can we do? throwing parties. <laughs> well, parties at communities, the communities and, yeah. and communities Focused represented at events, festivals, yeah. and, and, and which already has organically gone on, but it needs yeah. to be further encouraged and facilitated. Yeah, and what, what will we actually do? We go to events and uh, yeah. should have uh, uh, social time with each other. That's what we yeah. we're good at doing. How do yeah. we put that yeah. to well, One thing is that, that what's on. interesting is that mainstream culture pushes everything to the fringe, and just as some of our, our, our discussion last night was about that, how, yes, we're on the fringe, and this is where the edge is, this is where the creative juice is going on, yeah. this is, you yeah. know, and we're proud to be on this edge, but, yeah. but the mainstream culture does, in fact, methodically, or just, you know, naturally, push things to the fringe that it can't assimilate and spit back to us, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. so that's the culture that we need to further yeah, galvanize yeah. ourselves yeah. and get disc. back in, we need to influence the mainstream culture way more. And the intentional community movement, the point I was getting at, has been pushed to the fringes, to the, it's almost invisible to the world, even though there's thousands and thousands of mm -hmm. intentional communities. We're trying to live a different way with yeah. the land because of what's going on, people, you know, we're yeah. trying to model it, figure it out. And so the festival culture has mainstream connection. Look at Burning Man. Yeah. If there's money, there's people that can do shit. Yeah. Whereas the intentional community movement is kind of like suffering invisibly over here. And so... We can empower them a lot more. Yeah, how do you finance these kids? Yeah. I mean, um, uh, Brad and Jamil <coughs> used to talk about the idea of how they get multi-million dollar film budgets, and they, they spend a lot of the millions on uh, a set, usually, that just lasts for uh, the sh 40 days for the shoot. But why not build a set that's more permanent uh, uh, with the money? Absolutely. You could do a lot with several million dollars. Yes. And that could shoot the film and be useful. So well, I'd like to go out to Arcosani with a new event. You know, they've been yeah. having the Forum Festival out there. Which for years I said, gosh, we need to get a major festival going here and make some money and it's a cool place and yeah. instill the festival culture with this knowledge of this place. And, but the Forum Festival actually didn't do that. They did it for seven years there and they took over Arcosani and it was Skrillex out of LA and their crew and mainly a bunch of younger kids coming up just partying in this space age place. Yeah. But they completely trashed it. They, I mean, it was the no, opposite of Leave No Trace. More consciousness. 
so so they're not going to do it there anymore. But I think that there could be a really cool new festival come to Arcosani. Um, there was some epic festivals way back at its beginning in the 70s with Jackson Brown out there and others. But then they had the fire, the, the, the pyre of cars. 200, 300 cars burned at Arcosani at a big wow. festival out there. That's <laughs> horrible. And then there was the, that's sad, and, and it's also sad what happened with the idea of a festival on a cruise ship. It seemed like it had a lot of promise yeah. as, as an environment for, for a festival. Well, we did pull off Zingo Lottie, yeah. for those that might have been on that cruise. Yeah, you were, right? A burner, but 2,000 burners on a ship oh, for going <laughs> down to Mexico <laughs> and It must back. have been really interesting. Oh, it was unbelievable. Wow. Wow. It was a three-day, huh. no one slept for three days. So it kind of worked in a lot of levels, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone remember it? <laughs> yeah, I think that's what he's remembering now. <laughs> <laughs> traces, traces. Yeah. Well, so one other project to mention real quick. Yeah. Um, well, I might as, no, I didn't mention Radish. I mentioned Jamin Shively, who does the Sierra Club dinners, but he also, he's an ex-Microsoft vice president, and, and he has just been, bless him, he's been, on a warpath the last several years, what can we do? You know, because you know this data about what's happening right now has been around for quite a while, and particularly ten years ago, it became very, very evident. Okay, we've passed the tipping point. This thing is going down as far as the environment, right? So Jamie has been looking at everything to do, and and so he started a project called Radish, Radish. Radical Collective Intelligence. Oh, that's what that means. Radish.org, uh -huh. and got me involved to help him spell this out, and Michael Gallo. And the basic concept is we have so much potential with human collective intelligence that's untapped. We're just not using it because yeah. we've been, we're grown out of a system of we're all siloed and, and it's time for a new era of unprecedented collaboration. And that's going to bring about the collective intelligence. Yes, collective that's, intelligence that's will bring that way. about. And so AI's place is to empower that application of human collective intelligence. Yeah, it's so it's us. basically yeah. a methodology of how to start with ideation, mm -hmm. and then go into modeling, and then go into testing, and then go into implementation. But these are meta solutions. They're engaging, you know, massive cross-sector, cross-governmental, corporate co-op, whatever collaborations so to you stop do these things. And re stop competing and start cooperating. Everything changes. Yeah. Because right. all, the, all the energy you're trying to compete with, now you're working together. It's so amazing. Well, and that's the natural way that nature set things in motion for life is through cooperation, not competition. Yeah. In fact, as Bruce's theory shows, the pros you know, is where gradual cooperation Survival evolves. of the most cooperative. Yes. Yes, exactly. So the, uh, ideally, the AI, for example, would be able to be listening to our conversation <coughs> and then pull in remotely these two chairs, be filled with the right people that would be part of the conversation. Wow. Yes. <laughs> know who to access. And that's right, exactly. And that's what yeah. the very first level that we started with yeah. the Radish site is called the conversation space. Uh -huh. And it's conversations about problems and solutions. And then they're auto-transcribed, and then the AI searches it all and makes meaningful connections oh. between them, and you start to surface things. And, and the concept is that it's a combination of expert and non-expert participants in conversations about subjects, because the non-experts oftentimes bring in things that are necessary Great to really get to related. things. Yeah. And uh, so, but you know, that project got to a point where, well, these are great ideas. Now we need to get together with some heavy hitter organizations in the AI space that already are trying to think through this kind of stuff, because there are some very prominent initiatives now to put AI to use on managing the planet, you know, and, uh, and, and solving these problems and coming up with these, these remediation schemes and other things. Um, so that's what I hope. And by the way, almost every one of these projects that I mentioned you, needs funding and partners, and, and that's why I'm talking about this. Uh, so, uh, uh, Jamin is kind of on to other things. He's just used his own money to, you know, get this for the thinking and presentations on Radish, and there's material that's not on the website. But what's your uh, What's your analysis of the incorporating um, crypto into the equation? Well, it's look that's gets down. That's very related to the whole communitas thing because yeah. if we're going to you know step into some new social network kind of environments, in this case, this is a private network that can become other instances of the connective platform that we're using for Communitas can be easily spawned and have interactivity with other networks. So yeah. and, uh, also that can happen with this. But currency. the mainstream, including all of us and our digital identity, 
has got to go through a whole upgrade. And I think there's going to be certain social media kind of functions just that should be just built into the web, you know, the way things work. And so the decentralized web movement with Brewster Kale and the kind of mashup of the original web guys, right, with the young crypto heads, that to me is where the frontier is right now. And they're having a big, uh, either had it already or it's coming up, uh, uh, a big uh, distributed uh, web camp out mm -hmm. workshop going on. And there's a lot happening. It's pretty exciting. So Have you heard of the, uh, the whole spatial web focus too? Well, Dan Mapes versus Project, yes, uh, which looks really promising too. But those days, uh, but we need trust. You know, we need trust trusted for yeah. information, and that's what the decentralized web and blockchain promises trust. us. Without a centralized government, yeah. the whole um, you know EOS effort right now going on is pretty fascinating. Uh, the Holochain is initiative. I think they're really onto it. The next good, level. Good, yeah, yes. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, and we've got them interacting. They're, That's great. We're plugging in with them for the with the connective platform. And, cool. um, so, yeah, that's a big part of what's going on. And, and yeah, absolutely, as far as cryptocurrency and the financing of things and so forth. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What's, um, what's your latest thinking in the, your, your, your back plane theory? What's going on? My latest thinking there is I need to write the book. After <laughs> listening to Bruce yeah. talk last night and his journey of discovery, it's incredibly arrogant for me to say so, but I could have sat down there and picked it up where he left off and explained further what's going on, Ooh, the wow. phenomenon that he was seeing. That's seen. cool. Yeah. yeah. I absolutely can. And, and I what's, the name, it down. what's yeah. the name of the book? Mean, you, you would want an upstage boost? Yeah. No, next. Not upstage. No, no not compliment. upstage, but Continue. compliment. And, and, you know. You could have actually he's, done that. He's, why did you decide not to? Okay. Well, it was oh, it was so, so uh, much uh, energy uh, and everybody had been sitting around for two hours. Are you going to see a new chapter? Yeah, right, a new chapter. Part yeah. two. So I told him, two. I said, Bruce, I'm next next year, Ions, I want to be there. And yeah. Have this ready. Did you Good. call it Backstory? Was that what the... What it, I'll go Backstory. through. I'll share the comment thing right now, just, you know, so... Okay. It's, so it's on it, it involves some original thinking, I guess. I mean, part of it is um, using language to understand things. And uh. and, and, uh, and and knowing that, in fact, uh, thanks to Janine Benyus, we have the term biomimicry and the whole concept of, oh, yeah, mimicking nature, you know. Of course, John Muir and, and, and you know, but Mr. Fuller and many others figured that out early on, that nature is the ultimate design resource, right? No kidding. And so, you know, <laughs> Janine's project, asknature.org, is really cool, by the way, and biomimicry has had a huge impact in uh, the world of technology and, Ask and other nature. industries. Asknature.com? Yes, asknature. <laughs> If you want to design something, look to nature. If you want to design a solar cell, reverse engineer a plant leaf. You know, I mean, that's uh, biomimicry. Uh, is that uh, creature whose nature is coming from down the street? Oh, that's me. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, pay attention. Round two. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what's look at that. Yeah, they aren't mine, but I'm just... Um, they look very affectionate towards you. Oh, yeah, they are, because I've been feeding them. This is only the second walk I've ever taken them on. Wow. They just love to get out. Well, the other one, the red macaw, is this the yeah. red macaw? Yeah, yeah. The red one nobody's really handled like for like 10 years. Until that I that macaw was totally cuddling up to you. Was, oh, yeah, he's my boyfriend. How's he and liking? I got like texts and everything. I had, oh, yeah, I had a couple of macaws that lived wild in oh. my uh, uh, La Mesa, San Diego area. I wish these guys lived wild. Yeah, I had palm trees. They lived in the Isn't in the that palms. cool? I was like, what do I do if they get in the palm tree? Because I don't think they know how to fly. They aren't close, oh. I don't think they know how to fly. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. They're magnificent yeah. creatures. They're, they're really very really social. Really they're this they're is Mai Tai. His oh. name is Mai. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one's name is Tyler. Do they speak? Um, this one does. Tyler just says hi. This one says all sorts of stuff. And there's an African gray. And she actually whistles the theme song to the Andy Griffith show. <laughs> <laughs> And she's there always gives backup signals, and when you go upstairs, she's always all. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a cockatoo who's just a nuisance. Now, so, you, how did you get this? These are, I just the house. I just ended up bird sitting them. Oh. You're a lucky lady. Well, I am, but I've like got five dogs at home, and my mother. And You're everything. an animal lover. Oh yeah, well they yeah. love me too. Did you oh, live, obviously. Did you live close by? Yeah, did you huh? guys tell? Do you live close by? Yeah, I just live down at the next palm tree. Oh, okay. Stay out of the palm tree, you hear? <laughs> <laughs> it was a palm tree. 
I don't even know if this is a male or female. I don't know anything about them. Just, I, you know, I was feeding it for so long. I'm like, this is ridiculous. I started watching YouTube videos about how they handle them. They oh, took yeah. about three days, and they were, I can't get them off me now. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, good for you, lady. <laughs> I know. I can tell it's But you get struck across the face every once in a while. And yeah. bit. And their claws. And it's just, uh, you know, I, still, like, I, I have see, Texas Longhorns and I have horses, so you're going to get I can see you hate everything you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's great. You're a lucky lady. <laughs> I know. I get to take him to see my mom. Oh. Oh, That's my so God. wonderful. And he's so happy to see you just be here. Still. Oh, I can see yeah. that. Yeah. Totally yeah. cradling you. Mm-hmm. Oh. I'm cradling you because I don't know if he knows how to fly. Yeah, you guys are great. That was nice of her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That was a commercial break. (laughs) That's nature. (laughs) That was nature giving us a Oh, yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. So, you know, some of my real inspirations, uh, including Buck Mr. Fuller and Paolo Soleri, were both on to the biomimicry concept just very naturally in their work. You know, Soleri was understanding nature's systems and talking about, in fact, the concept that Bruce was describing through his language, but Soleri's language was the urban effect. Anytime organisms gather, complexity emerges yeah. in a, when they're contained. The urban effect, and it's all through nature, from cellular up to cities. He was interested cities in are concept, modern yeah. containers. Well, that has been the case because communication there was higher bandwidth when you were closer together. Yeah. But our communications revolution allows higher bandwidth further apart. So, the emergence of the newosphere, and that was another decentralizes. That's message yeah. number one of Bruce's talk: that we didn't, uh, we didn't arise as single cells; we arose as communities. Yes, that's indeed. how yeah. cells are so, made. So yes, the chicken was right. first. What's that? So the chicken. That chicken first. came first. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and each of our bodies is made up of all these amazing autonomous communities and individuals that, that have their own intelligence and solve problems on yeah. the fly and co- cooperate with it's each other. It's a fucking good thing. You wouldn't want to solve all those problems. You couldn't. We have no but they like it when the captain pays attention. They do like that. Well, they they like go, right. wow, he notices. Yeah, that's a little bit of You're right. And it, urges, and it, 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 it urges those yeah. components to continue that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. So, backplane theory. Over 10, over 10 years now. 20 years, okay. uh, actually. But 10 years saying, I'm going to write this book and start it. We'll do it maybe this year, a small version of it. And this is community talks. No. So no. This is theory of consciousness. Oh, back, 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 back plane theory. Back plane. Back plane theory, okay. And so, uh, and so I'm just saying kind of the ideas that led up, some of the ideas that led up to it, uh, and specifically then adopting terms from technology to describe certain phenomena, right? And, um, uh, and I'm just saying that it turns out that using technical terms, works because we our technology is mimicking nature systems so it's very useful right so the term backplane comes from computer networking and it's where the processor and the memory and the programming for the network resides but it's invisible to the network okay so if you think of so it's kind of a loose analogy for the backplane of our 4d world here and the backplane theory is very much about not the universe, it's about this locality, this mm. world, this organism of which we're a part, right? It's grokking it more deeply, okay? And when we did the Paradox Conferences, by the way, I, my declaration was we're exploring all these amazing pathways of evolution and so forth, but until we understand DNA and synchronicity uh-huh. completely, uh-huh. we're uh-huh. not understanding our reality. And in a way, that's the quest I've been on. Uh-huh. Good for you. And so... Uh, the uh, idea then that our 3D animated reality, this 3D projection in which we are positioned right now, uh, there is a backplane to the 5D pure consciousness realm of Gaia. And that pure consciousness realm is made up of the collective consciousness of all the organisms on the planet and beyond. And it is the meta mind of the planet, and it is involved in projecting the reality, the matrix that we're in, and shepherding mm. the matrix. So, Gary, is it a, is it a unified consciousness in and of itself? Is it, yes. Is it, it thinks for itself? Yeah. and it has to do with the sun uh-huh. and the whole planetary system, the whole star ring, I like to call it, this uh-huh. whole organism of which we're a part. Would it be you like know? the equivalent of the solar logos from Theosophy? Basically, the, the over... I think there's lots of parallels in different, I'm not that 
okay. touching on what you're like referring like to. It's like a divine intelligence and then like a solar divine system Divine mind okay. and all these things, you know. And yeah. it's certainly related to universal mind and galactic, the galactic ecosystem of which we're a part and all that. But yeah. let's just look at our reality right here, which appears to be a time tunnel that we're in, in this manifested little world of complex matter. And one of the principles that's inspired this too is complexity theory, which Paolo Soleric more or less came up with on his own by looking at the complexity, miniaturization, duration paradigm of those three principles in motion, that things are growing more, com matter is increasingly miniaturized systems of more complexity. And complexity is, happens through miniaturized systems of matter through time. And that, you know, if you look at things in terms of complexity and complexification, that's one of the vectors of nature is more complexification more enfoldment, more uh, variety and novelty, etc. You know, these, yeah, these the trajectories of, of nature. It's and so, complex. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, so you could look at it as if um, there are certain programs running in the matrix here that encourage uh, novelty and connection and synergy. And they are occurring on, and this, this is occurring on all levels of nature, and the field of reality is being morphed to facilitate events that promise more evolutionary richness. Low probability of in, it. Innovation, yeah. And Enhancing so, low probability. So these things happen that defy our normal probability lens that we see emergence come, and, and Bruce mentioned a couple of his immediate experiences in that regard last night. Which are just typical examples. I mean, an example being, two people two people meet at a party. Mm -hmm. They're having a dynamic conversation, and they find out that they have a shared field of research, and they start to exchange about that. And then the wife says, "We've got to go, Bill." And okay, well, listen, we'll be in touch. Right. You know. And two months go by, and one guy's in New York, and the elevator opens, and there's that other guy. <laughs> What are you doing? Oh, I'm waiting for my flight. Well, let's have a drink. They finish the conversation, and a new science theory is born, and many innovations come from that. Yeah. I mean, that's just an example, right? How many yeah. times has no, that, have you heard that story? Too, you know? oh, right? yeah. 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 And so that's the backplane. Okay, uh -huh. so what? Yeah. what is the backplane? Well, yeah, it's as Lovelock and others have described, is some consciousness is holding this thin layer of organic <laughs> life at this temperature right. and I mean come on guys I mean, sun and moon. something intelligent is going yeah. on here yeah like the moon on. being exactly where it is right. you're right I mean, I mean it's, 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 and so yes there's a mind divine mind that designed this and is designing it and, and I like to look at it as composed of all the intelligences that relate to those components of this world that they resonate with and that can be the higher angels of our backplane of our consciousness of the planet that are organizing things from a very high level, but they also beings that have been incarnated here that are still that are active on it, and they have resonance. And I'm talking about our spirit guides, and I'm talking about archangels that are involved in higher level events. I was first talking about the programs running in reality that are more or less like autonomic programs in our own bodies that run conscious of them that give you the parking place if you're meant to be at this meeting <laughs> it's just this automatic shit right. you know <laughs> I mean on an insect level there's uh, maybe a new uh, behavior that starts to happen and that behavior uh, promises a lot of other positive evolutionary consequences yes. so the back plane suddenly that pond that that insect behavior started to occur in because of the unique combination of plant species and other insects right around it, suddenly is 10 times bigger than it was. And they all don't know the difference. It's like, it's a, we're all bigger now. But I'm, ex I'm just giving an example of the synchronicity, how that might be made to occur there, that we're in a bigger pond, you know, whether that's literally true or not. But I, my feeling is reality is totally morphing backwards and forwards in time. I mean, it's just completely... Sideways, up, down. That's yeah. the, the nature of that book that you recommend so many years ago, um, where the guy goes back and forth. You, you, oh, I yes, read, right. Um, I read that. 
The stars, my de no. The weapon shops of issue. Or no, the stars, my destination. Stars, stars, my destination. Stars, my destination. I love the destination. They're going to make that a film, I think, sometime soon, which is the master, yeah, the master myth of science fiction. Yeah. Yeah. Who wrote the stars? Uh, Alfred Bester. Alfred Bester. Yeah. Stars I love the issue. So, is it, you know, it's in terms of synchronicity, is there a layer, a layer of universe where it's a like, matter of fact to put people together and make things happen, and then on this level, it seems like a miracle. Yes, that's what I'm saying, is that there are... Yeah. All of us have a fifth dimensional component ah, right. that's connected and all yeah. of our resonant fields that resonate with us. Those that have been here that know us, but those that also are tuned into us because of our lives and what we're doing and what evolutionary possibility that we represent. Yeah. That there's this whole... All of us have this cone going up with this <laughs> other thing. It makes that, sense. And we're dancing with it when we're dreaming. Yeah. We're, but... but I mean, yeah. it makes all the sense but in the world that we would that. be attracting what we were attracting, what was, was attracted to us. Right. Should we attract each other because of we that? We were given a, uh, um, directions on how to access this. Yeah. Many years ago in uh, the Celestine Prophecies, yeah. Oh, yeah. which is conscious conversation yeah. and having your question always in front of you, whatever that is, ah. it change day to day, moment to moment, and being open to the cues. And then uh -huh. if... If not doing anything else, appreciate the beauty of where you're at, whether it be the Most plants, important. which will receive your appreciation and give you some back. Very that's important. Upping your energy. Yeah. I and think making working more, more with available plants. to the energy that wants the, the, the communication wants to come through you. And then just being aware of that. I think that's how you access. Working this. more with the plants. They're much more ancient than we are. They know a heck of a lot more than we do. They're more enduring and. and we're silly when we try to manipulate them and get rid of the tearing down. We totally trees. are, and you know, unless they have to be phenomenal. held held by and guided yeah. by the mushrooms, the plants and the animals have been born to synergize together. That's yes. what we do. They're straight, and that's how they got the first trigrams. Oh, wow. yeah. But so it's a evolution that's been fostered by a combination of support from behind the scenes, but what we want, what we intend. And so things throughout history and today on a massive scale, mass media, are giving all different conflicting visions of what reality should be. Yeah. And the back plane does its best, and as we were discussing last night, you know, what is good and evil in this context? You know, in the broader world of nature, there isn't quite a good or evil, depending on what species you are at what moment with another species. It's yeah. relative. It's relative. And, uh, so, uh, we need, the bottom line is, a new integrated vision of reality that we can manifest with the backplane support. Like we've done before with great movements in the world, when the colonies of minds become global. And the most recent wave of synchronistic mass intention manifestation was the creation of the modern world that the year 2000 inspired. The year 2000 was the marker and the catalyst of focus for our collective intention as a world to build the future. And we ramped it up, you know, in the 1700s, 1800s, glimmers of this future world came into play in our apprehension of Gaian energies to manifest it. But as we marched towards the year 2000, you'll remember a gradual ramping up and acceleration towards that moment in time. Yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of interesting to note that all of the basic high-tech uh, uh, models of habitation, medical systems, everything, all the different definitions of the modern world that came into view in the 50s, that was happening in the 50s in the United States, and then it was emulated around the world. By the year 2000, the modern world was built as we envisioned it, this reality. And since then, there hasn't been a, as unified of a vision. Now, I'm talking about just, you know, this is not the whole world, but certainly, obviously, a major influential part well, of the world. It's the the, the, the next step in the vision, maybe. You know. Yeah, but and, and the new world here, I'm just so many things in the year 2000. And think about how, with that evolution of the technology and this massive global civilization unfolding how the web talk about an emergence system 
suddenly came on the scene. Yeah. Even those of us who created the underpinnings of it, the digital media revolution, had no idea it was going to happen that fast. Mm. It just like popped into existence just a few years before the millennium to give us the full on connected future planet <laughs> just in time. And now we have regular group meditations around the world for peace and for Yes, we do. All so, of so do you think, do you think it's possible? That, which I think is pretty darn popular. It is. It's, it is, it's amazing. Powerful. But it is connecting people to people. Well, that's actually one of the major things to think about with regard to what we're talking about here is the power of mass intention right. and the back plane following that mass intention. Right? Mass intention seems to bring about a what, great many what, uh, LOL cat pictures, too. All kinds of cats. <laughs> exactly. Cute cats. That's what well, we appreciate that species. How, can you, how, can, you, how can you resist it? It, it? it must satisfy some deep desire in our, in our, in our conscience. But I'd also, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd also say the thing. universe I wants to get animal, us animal pictures. what we ask for, and it knows what we're asking for by where we're putting our attention and our emotions. Exactly. True. Exactly. So we ask for things we don't want by going into doubt and fear yeah. with emotion. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we're asking to be given exactly what we don't That's want. What it is. Yeah, well, yeah. So yeah. it's really key to understand it, that. It is. First you understand it, then you figure out, well, how the heck do I not how react I that way? That? Which yeah. is like yeah. not so easy. But, right, yeah, exactly. But, but at least you're aware I do of it, you know? Yes. <coughs> but if you're aware of it, at least you can catch yourself. Yeah. yeah. Forget, forget about what I fear. What the fuck do I desire? Exactly. <laughs> what what <laughs> do I really want? Forget yeah, about all these monsters all around and yeah, all the yeah. shit that's yeah, happening. Yeah. What do I really want? Yeah, I, I keep asking to be, since I learned about the path of beauty from Jamie Sams, mm. I keep, I, I ask every morning to be seduced into my path of beauty. It's oh, beautiful. that's beautiful. So that I can trust seduction. That's beautiful. <laughs> that's beautiful. I like that. I'm going to try that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say, say that again, Michael. Uh, part, part of my morning meditation always includes being seduced into my path of beauty. Seduced Amongst people. all my relationships, the path of beauty means that noble middle way that serves uh -huh. the greater good. That's wonderful. So, and then, if you're going to go, would you rather be driven into your path of beauty? Like, <laughs> oh, oh no, I'm running towards my path of beauty. Or seduced into your path of beauty. Uh -huh. went, well, yeah. I'd rather be seduced, thank you very much, you know. <laughs> uh -huh. very, good, very good, very good. And that way, if I, really if, I, if I get seduced, I have an out. But wait a minute, I asked for, you know, I mean, how did I know it wasn't my path? <laughs> so it felt good. <laughs> it sure was pretty seductive. <laughs> sure felt like it <laughs> felt pretty beautiful at the moment. You know. So do you think the uh, the internet then is um, is driven by the nature? Or, you know, do you think it's uh, it's some kind of species exo nervous system? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. it's a primitive they... it's a primitive mimicking of the back plane itself. Oh. Oh. You, know, you can do anything you want on the internet. You can, if, you can think it's about it, if you can think about it, you can probably do it. Ultimately, it's all knowledge. Nature. You know, I mean, inspired by you know, Urban Laszlo's term of the uh, Akashic field, as it applies. As, but I, I wanted to go back with Michael. It was saying and, and uh, cite the uh, Roger Nelson's Global Consciousness Project, which you guys know about. But Princeton just eggs and all. Reiterated. Yeah. yeah, they they have. It was inspired by Dean Radin's work with. Um, uh, random number generator uh, putting a stream of numbers on a computer screen and a subject trying to make them non-random yeah. and seeing that that would work and then so well let's try that on a global level so having 60 computerized chips they call them eggs EEGs or yeah EGGs really what it stands for but uh, computers in 60 locations around the world with a specialized chip spewing out a stream of random numbers yeah. all going back to the server in Princeton okay so that's what you got <laughs> So, recording all that data of that those random composite, you know, aggregated random number streams on his server. That's what he's been doing for 20 years. And so they they look at that data as it relates to events going on, and they will see uh, on the planet. Look at the news. So whenever something really big happens, where thousands of human beings are similarly entrained on the same thought. There's an earthquake happening. There's an earthquake happening. Or, you know, it's the Super Bowl. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's New Year's. Yeah. Or 9-11. Yeah. It shows remarkable uh, coherence shows up in this aggregated stream. Non-random. Right. So, non-random. Non-random yeah. non coherence. So, what in the hell causes electrons bouncing off satellites and underground cables on a yeah. server? You know, what, what the fuck? Right, so I mean, I th okay, my answer is 
model to consider is that we are in fact blinking in and out of existence on this time tunnel planet thing <laughs> going Multiple around times our, a second. our one soul and and it's in that moment between the blink in and out of existence that everything is one it's, it's, that's all just pure backplane there and so when the minds are entrained at that moment and it, it somehow is registering you know it's it's somehow as everything reforms there's some slight variation Car carries across the gap you might say of those colonies of minds at that at that juncture that's an interesting way to perceive it yeah and i i i like the idea that you you create your reality and what's real moment to moment and that literally by blinking in and out you know uh, i think it was talking to all pigeons who talked about you know at the atomic level you're going to the edges of creation and back you're multiple Nothing you're everything. And what your attention is, or your coherence is, is what you come back to. So that is why you can have instantaneous healing <laughs> and things like that if you allow, if you give yourself permission yeah, for that. Yeah. I really like that. Now I was going to ask you what you think, because Bruce Damer, as a reductionist, because he will claim he's a reductionist, died right. in the wall. Uh, as uh, did Tim Leary. Yeah, he did. Believe it or not. I'm surprised. But but he but but uh, I. It, I, I actually like the story better that the universe is consciousness and that we are just uh, focuses of it, you know, but the consciousness was there before humans. And I think Bruce likes it to build it up from the other direction and that, you know, life created blah, 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 humans. And I understand. No, totally. That, that is following the... Normal so the reductionist portion. is saying it, you know, it started here and built itself up, and I'm saying the field was there, it was conscious, and what the uh, theosophists would call ether, which yeah. is an intelligent thinking substance that wants nothing more than to manifest whatever seed is planted, and we are simply good planters of seeds. Yeah. Some of us better than others, depending on what we're planting, our our hopes or our fears. You know, I guess they're both valid and important because we, we do we it. Are. The universe loves us so much it'll let us have whatever we want well, look, as long know, as we want it, right? We have been creating our own manifestation of embodiment here, yeah. drawing upon the Akashic field of all the different forms that are already going on out there and our own unique mix of it. And that m unique mix of forms is all contributed back to the master database for everyone to use. You know, you can look at it that way. It's also interesting to look at the sun if you just forget about the third infinity, which we ignore because we're in it so much, and that is size, scale, and you just think of the sun as our own one soul consciousness, is what it is, vibration. It's touching the whole cosmos all the time. And those pulses of light, I mean, it's, it's information coming back to us it's as well as going out us from us. A lot of people forget that the sun is a star. Yeah. Hey, jolly, jolly fusion furnace, jolly, jolly fusion furnace, jolly, jolly fusion furnace of our dreams. That's a, there you go. Jolly fusion <laughs> furnace. <laughs> jolly, jolly fusion furnace. I love it. Oh, oh, oh. That, that, that was conceived right here on the beach. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it is pretty jolly. Yeah, it is. You know, uh, there's another project I want to mention that relates to our discussion right now, and that is a uh, the thing called Dancing with the Trickster, which is inspired by Stanley Krippner, uh, his work. And uh, it's a website community that is going to be built, and a book and a television series, ideally. Is Krippner still uh, alive? All about, Krippner yes, he is. He is. He's still kicking, still putting out stuff. All about? All about anomalous experiences, extraordinary experiences. Oh, yes, yeah, so we kinds. love those. <laughs> and, and, you know, cutting edge of consciousness, basically. Yeah, yeah. But the accounts of individuals just like us, people have had, you know, clairvoyant dreams or, uh -huh. you know, a wake up experience, a, a, yes, a shamanic experience, a, a, a psychotic break. The you know. We're just walking to people when things happen. Yeah. And, and so, uh, and, and having, uh, you know, Dean Radin's involved. Stan Groff has a book, When the Impossible Happens, that's about 
possible things that happened to him. Mm -hmm. Of course, he stacked off. You can imagine right. what happened to him. And it yes. that in. Have you read the book uh, Divine Interventions by Dan Milburn? Oh, Dan. I don't know that I have read that. I read The I Warrior's they, Way of the Yes, oh, yeah. Yeah. Divine Interventions, the Interventions is about 12 stories of things that happen to just normal people that mm. change the li their uh -huh, lives uh -huh. and the lives of the world. Right. So it included uh, when Muhammad was told to go tell everyone oh, that yes. religion was wrong. Uh -huh. You know, and he's there going, what? You've got to be kidding me. And then the, and then the uh, you, know, cause, you know, I'm just a uh, goat herd. I mean, we just, like, want to go tell the priests that they're full of shit, you know, whatever. whatever. <laughs> right. And so, then, you know, and, uh, and then the, uh, the spring of at uh, one of the sacred springs, maybe the one at Lourdes, that was revealed to a couple of girls. And, you know, all of these different things that are highly, highly, highly researched. And yes. Swears. And there were some really amazing things. So, uh, so okay. on this same path, Jeffrey Kripal, who is now the chairman of, of uh, he's a professor of religion, he got very disappointed with regular religions. And he says, the events like the Mohammed things are things that started religions. But these events are happening all the time. Yeah. They don't necessarily start religions, but right. they change people. Yeah. So that's what he's studying. He's studying, you know, ordinary people having fantastic sometimes with transformational God, but mostly with God. And, and that, that alters yeah. their lives. He, and that's part of the communitas is it means this, the, the spirit of community that emerges when a group of people go experience liminality together. Liminality? Oh, no, yes. that's another word. Liminality. Yeah. Talk about really the liminal. The liminals. The yeah, the, the, yeah. You mean the possible the edge of possibility, possibility of possibility? Yeah, yeah I mean, just out of the box experience, right. basically. Right. Out of yeah. the edges. Yeah. There's, a, there's a phrase in the Bible that always fascinated me. When two or three of you are gathered in my name, there we are. <laughs> two, or more. We're two or more again. Two or more again. Are, are yeah, that's scary. That's yeah. tremendous. Spooky. Mine's a spooky. <laughs> Who's Nick likes spooky things? I see. I mean, God is up there. <laughs> that's how you get your trill. Yeah, no, 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 I, I was raised as a Catholic. Like, God is up there, not here with this group. <laughs> well, you also gave up Catholicism. You'd right love did. to go back to it. No, I, I, don't, I can't go back. <laughs> Eat static. Eat static. Yum, yum. Not just your ordinary static. It's certainly staticky. Yeah. It's not staticky so far. Better projection. This is good dance music. Yeah. Makes you want to rock. Even Nick's rocking. And I'm trying to find the right channel. It's all <laughs> static. <laughs> Nick said, what? He always likes to call you first. That's well, that's like Nick. That's idea. not you. I'm talking to you. I'm, I, I'm still going to talk to him. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have a turn with well, him. I still like to call him. <laughs> you're there because you've been gone so much. I'm it doesn't so matter. I don't, I, don't have, I don't have to be there. I love coming over to your house. Well, you should come. Yeah, yeah well, I will. Yeah. yeah. We've met before. I recognize yeah. Beth. Yeah. She's so brilliant and I'm so gorgeous I'm so and happy. You know, we had that conversation about me changing my name, and after that she changed hers, and I thought that I might have had some, some way of encouraging her when we were talking about that. She already had when you guys had that conversation. And I think I just encouraged her to go It was just the ahead. first week until I realized she would prefer to be called Dora. Yeah, and the fact that, that she, There's a lot of Sue's she had, within the right. stones throw my house in all directions. She needed a little push from me, and that was it. Right. I mean, I, mean I, 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 I reassured her that what she was doing was the right thing, I guess, because it was right. 
right after that suit she did it. We both have the same name, and that suit, you're right, that oh, suit is around. Right. Yeah. That's right. August, your name is Sue also? Well, I started out with a Susan. My parents called me Susan, and they called me Susie, and I didn't get any, any of that. Yeah, exactly. So now yeah. grab that man. All right. Merk of the Beauty. Merk of the Beauty. Here we go. Into the chest. Merk into your chest. There's that oh, 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 you know, I got the, I got all go the information the about, it's called Rhino Not me. Hey, hey, uh, 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 have you got, you got any pictures? Oh, no, I, it's already, already done. So, I already oh, got done. the shit. I got the shit. It's Good, I'm glad you're done. Yeah, Three like coats. Like the chickens. Are we moving to camp? Are we moving to camp? I'm unstable I'm and I'm in pain. We're working into it. Oh, good. I can do it. Uh, 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 we missed you. We have missed you a lot. And he says, well, we should need to come over whenever we're ready. Guys has got to come up and see this guy dad. Oh, he just left. He's, he's going to be inside. We're all going inside now. Yeah, we, we, we've been sitting out here. I think we're going cooking. to cook. Did you see Al's latest toy? Oh, my God. God. It's a, it's a, it's a military jeep with a, with a camera on it. Well, he can control by remote control. Nothing like black tape. Can I support <laughs> nothing your... Like, can I support nothing, your like, nothing like black tape. What's descent? that? Can I support you in coming well, in? I, yeah, you can, you can accompany me. I can accompany you. So, and support. So, uh, you know, lately, my... my my leg is going crazy, and, and I have weakness muscles now, but now i got weakness plus pain. So I tried the head thing as well. I tried everything. I tried everything. Some people do it. 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 <laughs> and then, and then, and then just waiting.